Today, I'm going to be making kvass, the Russian fermented bread drink, thanks to Grandad for the recipe. Kvass is a drink fermented from rye bread, or black bread as it's otherwise known, very popular in mainly Slavic and Baltic countries. The drink itself has been around for at least since the Middle Ages in Russia and in Eastern Europe. In fact, during the reign of Peter the Great, it was the most common non-alcoholic beverage from every class of society. So from the peasants to the aristocrats, everybody drank kvass and that was the, their favorite drink. Peasants working in the fields even used to drink kvass instead of water as they believed it restored their strength and reduced their fatigue. Kvass is also older than vodka, the Cyrillic alphabet, and even Russia as a country right now. In somewhat more recent history, kvass has become so popular that it was named the communist Coca-Cola. People would be more excited to get kvass during the hot weather than they would be ice cream. And this can be evident from scenes where people would be queuing up outside when the local kvassnik would come round with their barrels full of kvass. Everybody would come round to get the communal cup from which to drink from. Given that kvass is fermented rye bread, it's got that familiar sour twang that Eastern Europeans seem to love so much, which isn't really given that surprising from the people that love pickled herring, pickled cucumbers, pickled mushrooms, pickled cabbage, soured cream, anything sour and pickled. Yeah, that's right, they're probably drinking it. And with that, I'm gonna show you the ingredients required. All you need to do is take some black bread, raisins, sugar, and some water and that's all you're gonna need. You might notice also that I haven't said yeast. Well, that's right, the yeast itself is gonna be on these raisins and this is what's going to ferment. First steps, you're gonna to want to take your rye bread and you're gonna to wanna to toast this until it gets a nice thick crust and gets almost a bit charred and black. You don't want it burnt, but you want it nice and charred. Once it's all toasted, you wanna to get a nice large bowl. Add the bread to the bowl. You can hear the sound of the crust. Essentially smush it if it's not too hot, just to allow it for a little bit more surface area. Once it's in the bowl, you can get about two big spoonfuls of sugar, tablespoons, and top it up with about two liters of boiling water. Stir it together, just to make sure that all the sugar has dissolved. Once that's done, put a lid over and leave it until it gets to about room temperature. Once your bread sugar mixture is at room temperature, what you want to do is take some kind of container that you want to use and transfer it into one of these containers. Now the trick here is you do want the bread to go into the container as well. So make sure to use a funnel of some sort if you're going to be using one of these standard water bottles. In the absence of a funnel, I'm just going to use a standard measuring jug and scoop it in. Then you wanna take maybe half of your raisins and just plop them in. And that's it. Make sure to cover it with some sort of cheesecloth or a balloon if you're using this, just to keep any contaminants out. Luckily, I've got a lid that is fairly sturdy while not being completely airtight. Then leave this in a warm, dark place for around 24 hours, and you should start to see the signs of fermentation. After about four days, this should be ready to pour and carbonate. And now after two to three days, you can see our kvass. You can see some of the raisins have floated to the top as well as some of the bread, and that's looking absolutely ripe for transferring. So what you want to do is grab a funnel, grab some kind of straining cloth or cheesecloth that you can use, and preferably a plastic bottle. What we'll be doing is transferring this kvass into a plastic bottle along with a teaspoon of sugar and putting it into the fridge just for a couple more days to get cold and to carbonate a little bit, as you don't want your kvass completely flat. So grab your bottle, stick a funnel in, put open your filter or cheesecloth or whatever you're gonna to use to strain, and pour in the kvass. This time, you don't want to be getting any of the bits in and you want just the pure kvass inside. As you can see, this may take a little while. 
Once you've filled up your glass, make sure not to fill it to the very top. You want to leave about half the bottle of just empty air. And the reason for this is once we add a little bit of sugar just to carbonate it, we're gonna to wanna to press this down. And as we press it down, you'll see that the amount of kvass rises. And the reason that we press it down is so that as it carbonates, it's going to expand back out again. And when it starts looking like a normal bottle, you know that it's carbonated enough and it's ready to drink. So what we're going to do, so we're going to add one teaspoon of sugar. Close the lid up, give it a shake. And then be sure to press it down just for the carbonation level. There. Now you can pop this in the fridge and it should be ready and carbonated as soon as the bottle is expanded back out to full and then it's ready to drink. It's probably take you about two to three, maybe four days maximum. After about one day, this inflated back out to full and you can see here that it is completely full. After it inflated, I stuck it in the fridge for about a day or two maximum, just to let it cool down a little bit and let any sediment sink to the bottom. Once that was done, we're finished. That took, what, six days maximum? Not long at all. Now, it's time for the tasting. I'm very excited with this. Bit of a fizz. Oh, that smells incredible. Wow, it's got some carbonation to it. Lovely and carbonated, you can see the bubbles rising to the top. Very pretty. Not massively carbonated, but just a little bit, just as the way that I like it. And so, cheers. Wow. I mean... Absolutely lovely. This just makes me think of relaxing, feet up, by a pool, maybe doing a bit of fishing. Absolutely lovely, absolutely thirst quenching. Definitely try to make your own. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you made your own, how that went on, or if you'd like for me to try any other recipes or any other videos. Cheers.